Welcome back to Vegas and the World Series of Bowling. Two weeks ago, Bill O'Neill dominated in the Pepsi Viper Championship. Today, O'Neill is back in a final. The lone American in a step ladder full of international players at the PBA Scorpion Championship. Two of those foreign invaders are South Koreans Yong Jin Koo and number one seed Jun Young Kim. Not much is known about the mysterious Koo, other than the fact that he has quietly knocked off some of the PBA's best here at the World Series of Gold. South Koreans Koo and Kim, Australian Jason Belmonte, and Canadian Dan McClellan. It's Bill O'Neill versus the world here in Las Vegas. Over 250 professional bowlers from 14 different countries bowling on five different oil patterns have invaded Las Vegas to be part of an event unlike any other in sports. The PBA World Series of Bowling. It's the ultimate test. Six PBA Tour titles all decided in a five-man stepladder format with an uninterrupted championship match each week. It all leads up to the main event. January's PBA World Championship, the first major of the season. It's the PBA versus the rest of the world. And it all continues now. Today, the World Series of Bowling rolls on from Las Vegas three weeks into the PBA season, and we've had three different winners. Today, our first chance for a repeat titleist as Bill O'Neill looks to take the Scorpion Championship. And we welcome you inside the South Point Hotel and Casino. Rob Stone joined by 13-time titleist Randy Peterson. Today's show is kind of the PBA's version of a trip to Epcot Center. We have four different countries represented here on today's show. So how does the international flavor translate to the lanes today? Well, the lanes are going to get beat up today because there's so much power on the telecast. And I think what we're seeing is that the power game is no longer just the U.S. style, it's become a world style. And we're going to see that today with a two-handed power player in Jason Belmonte from Australia. You'll also see it in Dan McClellan from Canada. And our number one seed, Mr. Kim from South Korea. All power players, they're really going to beat up this oil pattern, but a lot of fun to watch all that power go down the lane. The bowling world getting just a little bit smaller. Your lone American, Bill O'Neill, he may be the best bowler on the planet right now. I think you're right, Robin. When he won his first title at last year's World Series, you knew great things were going to happen because he was making a lot of telecasts, but he wasn't winning. He won his first title then, and he went on to win the U.S. Open, and he really took his game to new heights, and he proved that at this year's World Series. And we bring in Kimberly Preston now for more on this historic bowling summit. Kimberly? That's right, Bob, because for the first time in history, there is only one American going for a PBA title on U.S. soil. He's going up against a group of invaders from across the world. We have two Koreans, Kim and Koo, and then we have PBA pro Dan McClellan from Canada and Australian-born Jason Belmonte, who is on the tour and a very good friend of Bill O'Neill. In fact, they're such good friends, they're sharing a house here in Las Vegas during the World Series of Bowling. Thanks, Kimberly. Here's Mike J. Lane side with the introduction. The number five player is a three-time collegiate All-American from Saginaw Valley State representing Canada. Dan the man, Dan McClellan. <laughs> D-Max steps up and then a victory by Dan would equal the first Canadian to win a Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. And you and I were talking off camera before the show, Randy, and this is a young talent you really enjoy watching and have high aspirations for. Without question. Wait till you see this style. It's one of the most pure stroking power games you'll ever see. Wow, does he bring that ball back. Ball. Big, big high back swing, but very much in control, in great balance at the bottom of the swing and at the foul line. Who do you think brings it back further, Dan or Michael Fagan? That's pretty close. They're yeah. both they're both almost vertical. Yeah. So his first frame on American television translates into a spare. 
The number four qualifier headed carries from 14th position during match play, representing Korea, Yong Jin Koo. He looks like kind of a cross of an Asian Pete Weber with the glasses and then somebody from Tron with that huge left wrist brace. It's a dangerous combination, if you ask me. That's how you start. Take a look at the arsenal of Yong Jin Ku today. Anarchy and theory. Theory on the right lane, anarchy on the left lane, both with the same amount of hook rating. Two different bowling balls, two different reactions, though. Back to back, opening jacks for the Korean. Did you? Mention that Ku is 48 years old. Doesn't look it. Look at this thing. It, it, it's like the bionic bowler over there. I mean, we, Mike Scroggins has a big wrist contraption. That thing dwarfs it. I like the Tron reference. You That's do? Pretty cool, yeah. I, I pulled that one out just for you. So here is the Canadian, Dan McLelland, native of Windsor, Ontario, Canada, just over the border from the Detroit, Michigan area. DMAC, frame number two. Oof! 7 10. And what a rude welcome to television for Dan McClellan. This is a great shot, and I've always said that I think a pocket 7 10 is the worst break in bowling because you throw a good shot, it has the possibility of striking, and now you're looking at an open frame. It's not just the 7 or the 10, it's both. Only three players in the history have ever made this on television. Mm. Good effort, Dan. That Got a was, good kick. That was really close. Slugs the 10 oh. and gets a great kick. Oof. I mean, that, that came within an inch of making it. Well, it is a game of inches when you really start breaking things down. How close that was for Dan. So spare open frame for the Canadians. We begin the third. Pure physics is what he's using. Messenger kicks one. Can't drop the ten. Not the start that Lellen was hoping for, clearly. McClellan keeps his composure, gets the spare, and we'll delve into the academic side of McClellan and how it cut into his Vegas activities when our cover the Scorpion Championship returns to Vegas. Glad you're back here with us at the South Point Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas as ESPN's presentation of the World Series of Bowling rolls on. Time now for this week's edition of the Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood. The Scorpion oil pattern is 41 feet in length and is the second longest pattern we use out here on tour. Now look for the players to go fairly straight early on, but as the lane oil goes through transition, look for the players to jump way in immediately. A lot like what we've seen in past weeks with the Viper and Chameleon oil patterns. But the big difference is that the Scorpion is so much longer than those other patterns that when the players do move in, they must keep their angles much straighter and much tighter through the front part of the lane. One other note, we do have only one southpaw on the telecast today, Young Jin Ku. He'll have the whole left side of the lane to himself. All right, Randy, while we are away, and McClellan in the fourth. Left that, and then in the fifth. Able to drop all 10 again. Young Jin Koo, the lefty from South Korea. Getting all 10 to drop there. 
And here in the fourth frame, Roth throwing a different bowling ball on that left lane. Nice shot out of his hand, but it drifts high, leaving a six pit. Back to the right lane. Different ball. Different result. Goes light. Back to the left lane again. And that's 10 in the pit. So Koo, after a hot start, has calmed down a little bit, but the Canadian, McLellan, still seeking his first strike on national television. A rough start for Danny Mack. That open frame in the second really hurting him, but he's been surrounded by nine spares since that needs a strike, needs to get himself into this game down 33 as he closes out the sixth. He has made a ball change. Go. Anyway, D Mac. Nice. Still a student at Saginaw Valley State. He's not on the team because his bowling eligibility up. He's taking four classes right now, a total of 12 credits, a full course load. He's taken two criminal justice classes, two in sociology. He'll graduate in May. And he was telling us, Randy, he's been very busy academically this week. Had a cram for four quizzes just the other day prior to his effort here at the Scorpion Championship. And here's Dan's arsenal for the day. Well, he switched from pure physics to the outburst. Come on! Two in a row for the Canadian. Boy, okay. that's, that's a huge right. break. He needed that. He needed something good to happen. He makes the ball change, makes the adjustment, makes two really good shots. This ball here, just a little late turn in the corner. And this is a huge double to get Dan right back in this match. I got to tell you, Rob, known this kid for for a, a short while now and i'm really really high on dan mcclellan i think he just may be a superstar someday out on this tour he's got a great head about him he's a great kid and i think physically he's got all the tools how about great bowling talent coming to the pba courtesy of saginaw valley state your number three seat coming up next bill o'neill also from saginaw valley state and here is the south korean coup your four seat Strike number five for Ku. So just when he thought he was going to leave an opening for McLellan, he starts to shut it with a double there. Yeah, he just won't take his foot off the accelerator. Nice little shot here. Rips that rack, and he likes it. If he oh. gets if he gets four in a row there, Rod, do you think do you think he knows about the hand bone? If he does not yell out hand bone in Korean, I'm gonna have him deported immediately. That's the power I hold. Ooh, can we call it a Brooklyn? Can we call it a Seoul? Or? So, uh, yeah, I, man, that, if you're Dan McClellan, that's a really, really hard thing to watch. You know, you're, you're already trailing in the match, and then your opponent's working on a double, pulls one dead right, and goes high flush Brooklyn. He'll take it. The lefty from South Korea takes a seat. Takes the shades off. Yeah, he's dropped two three-baggers already here in match number one. The deficit at 43. Nice shot. So Danny Mack on the PBA tour today, but classes still on his mind. Still in school, yes. I graduated in May. Um, I have a bachelor in sociology. I started a little later. I started uh, when I was 20, going on 21. Um, I'm not one of the brainiacs. I like to have fun and sometimes push aside my homework. But um, last few years, been getting it done and just want to graduate, get out and full full time, basically. Take a look at the high backswing. There's the rotation, that hand and wrist snap right at the bottom of the swing. That's what creates power. Just a pinch high, leaving the floor. So Ku steps up, working on a three-bagger. His lead at 34 as he gets set to close out the ninth. Again, four international players on our five-man show today. 
Another Korean, Jun Young Kim, your number one seed. Jason Belmonte, the two-handed wonder from Australia, is your two seed. And here's your four seed, Koo, also from South Korea. Say it. Say it, Koo. Say it. Hambone. I want you to take a look at this form. And Koo, not a very big man, but he does what some of the shorter players do, and that's they get their feet going. These feet have to get going to create ball speed. Kept, keeps his head down, nice balance at the foul line, hits his target. And again, crossing over or through the nose on that left lane. So right now the match is over. He's won, he's moving on. He just needs to figure out this left lane. We talked with some of the other pros on the tour about Koo, and they weren't completely enamored with his, his style and his scoring pace. I don't think a lot of people had high expectations for him making the TV show and then going beyond, but, well, he's looked very much in control from the get-go here today. Yeah, he really has, and you're right. You know, he's got kind of a kind of an unassuming style. He's not that real flashy power player that, you know, we're used to watching week in and week out out here on tour, but... Hey, you know what? This guy stepped up in position round, bowled a big game, went around a couple of bodies just to make the show, and I was making the best of it. Well, think about all the things he has to overcome. You know, he comes from South Korea to here in Las Vegas. Language issues, food issues, everything. And here he is on his American TV debut, winning and moving on. Up next, Bill O'Neill. He already claimed the Viper Championship two weekends ago. Today, he tries to make it a double for the young season. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler welcome you back to Las Vegas and Young Jin Koo's American State continues South Korean with a 41 pin victory in Dan Wellen. So Koo moves on to take on your number three seed, your lone American on today's telecast, Bill O'Neill, and Koo will roll lead off. Another strong start for the Korean and here is his competitor, probably the best bowler on the planet right now. The number three qualifier owns three PBA tour titles, including one major. From Southampton, PA, the real deal, Bill O'Neill. In week number two, O'Neill won the Pepsi Viper Championship as a four seed, took down Amleto Monicelli, Mike Devaney, Tommy Jones, and then Andres Gomez in the title match, and all of them were convincing wins. 85 pins, 33 pins, 56 pins, 33 pins. Watch out for O'Neal. Oh, way right, and a tough lead to start this one off. That makes sense. Yeah, and in his last victory, he didn't break a sweat. Untested, he never got into trouble, and just was kind of robot-like. Take a look at Bill O'Neill's arsenal. Going again with the taboo, which I believe is the same ball he won with. Taboo ball seems like an appropriate choice in Vegas. Because? It's got that Sin City feel to it. O'Neal, big pickup! So digs himself out of a potential early nasty hole as his wife Christy looks on. And all you want to do is get the bowling ball to the left side of the head pin and throw it right into the 10. Bill O'Neill does that perfectly. This guy's got everything in his back. Including money. True that. The reigning U.S. Open champion, Bill O'Neill, to start the second. Oh, oh, oh. Four, six, seven, split. You guys did nice work on this pair, didn't you? you? Guys did real nice work on it. Well, he gets it wide on the right lane, leaves a washout. Now he tries to square up his angles and goes right through the nose. And an open frame in a second. Maybe a little grabby at release on that shot. Caused it to check early and go high. Well, we saw in match number one, Koo get off to a great start. His competitors struggle a little bit early. We're seeing a similar match develop here early on.
want you to watch the way Coop puts his hand in the bowling ball. He gets actually all three fingers, pinky, ring finger, middle finger, along with his thumb. And it's very, uh, very unique. A very unique grip, and uh, the only other player that I know that uses that grip that bowled out here on tour is PBA Hall of Famer Mark Williams. This guy is pumped up. Look at that. He's doing, like, the dance. He's kind of grooving to a little Led Zeppelin every time he strikes. I like it. Me a little too. cashmere in the background. This guy puts the aisle in style. I like this guy. There's, there's an aura about him. It, it frightens me, but I, I'm attracted to him. Oh, gets the seven to drop late, a massive break. Yeah, you're right. That's a huge break. He avoids the big split. Watch this. This ball's going to drift high. He got, he's got the whole left side of the lane to himself. No traffic over there, but that one goes high, almost leaving the 6-7. I mean, remember what happened last time we had the lone lefty on the show? Rob, it was just a week ago. Scott Norton. What a great run Scott Norton, the rookie from California, had last week, winning on his first American TV show. Well, it's been a busy 2010 for O'Neill, and with his recent success, so his day planner may be filling up fast for the new year. More on the life-changing year Bill O'Neill is in the midst of when we return to Vegas. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcome you back to Las Vegas, our continuing coach for the World Series of Bowling. Bill O'Neill, while we're away in the third on the right lane, getting all 10 to drop. And Randy, he moves to the left. Same result. Yeah, and a nice way to come back from an open frame. Mr. Koo in the fourth. Used the four seven, was able to clean it up. Better result in the fifth. There's that down and in shot. Perfect one two pocket hit. Mr. Koo with the lead through four and a half. O'Neill down 11. Spare big open frame there in the second. Then strike, strike for Bill O'Neill. Very important shot for O'Neill here in the fifth. He's got the uh, Midas touch at the bottom of the swing because I'll tell you what, the pins always react to that good touch at release. He likes it right off his hand and the trip four on a double is always a really good sign for a right-hander. You know what's another good sign for somebody trying to get back into a match? Yes. Dropping a hand bone. Nice. You see, he made a ball change, started with mm -hmm. taboo, has now gone to something a little bit weaker. That's the jack. Big four bagger for O'Neill. He just sent a message to Mr. Koo. Mm -hmm. And that message was? I'm not going anywhere, sir. I'm right here in front of you. I think you're saying it in a politically correct fashion. And I'm getting up, I'm about to get up in your grill. Well, Koo off to a great start in match number one. We saw McClellan make a little run, and Koo responded. Let's see what he does here in match number two. That's the response we saw from Koo in match one. This guy got, he's got a lot of moxie. He made a ball change. He's now using the same ball on both lanes. This guy is fearless. I love it. Just running it out, going, oh yeah. Yeah, I see your I see your your four bagger there, Mr. O'Neill, and I'll raise you a double to take the lead right back from you. This is Vegas, right? It's all about raising, calling, and playing with the shades on too. <laughs> now, you know... What's Randy, he yelling there? Well, I, you know I'm a big fan of uh, a student of the dialects. Sure. Right? Yeah, you're a big language guy. I know right, that. of course. So I asked, uh, I asked uh, another Korean friend here, asked him how you say strike in Korean, and I think I've mastered it. You ready? Yeah. Here's how you say strike in Korean. Okay. Strike. 
<laughs> Seriously. So that's good. So I got that going for me, which is nice. O'Neal, down 11. Yeah! I thought the messenger was going to kick out the 10 for a Yahtzee. And a bad time to leave a spare. Bill O'Neill, very busy in 2010, has had a ton on his plate this year. So after the spare, O'Neill gets set for frame number eight, and it has been a very busy year on and off the lanes for that young man. Uh, well, I got, I got married in May, um, so that this uh, 2010 year has been, uh, it's been pretty special. Uh, Twin U.S. Open. And then two months later, um, to get married to a, to a wonderful girl is, is, uh, is pretty special. Well, we met in a bowling alley, and it's kind of cliche that we met in a bowling alley, but um, he was helping my dad out with the clinic for youth bowlers. And he had asked me to help his daughter out. She, you know, she bowls as well, and she bowled for uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University. We got off to kind of a rocky start. Uh, didn't really go that smooth in the beginning. Uh, I'm not really having any game. So it just kind of usually takes me like six to eight months to walk down a date, so. It was just a big adjustment for me, being with somebody who traveled all the time and not seeing each other. So it was really hard on that part. I mean, I couldn't let him think that he could be with me that easy, right? I had to make him work a little bit for it. She is extremely understanding because um, I travel all over the world um, to do the sport that I love to do and to earn a living at it. So. She uh, doesn't really like the fact that I'm, I'm gone, you know, three weeks a month, but, um, you know, she knows it's what I love to do, and she knows I have to do it. O'Neal down a dozen as we begin the eighth. It is going to be tough to get that second title of the season right now. Not out of the realm of possibilities. But it's going to be tough for O'Neill. Well, obviously, the all pattern right side of the lane, very, very sensitive. Bill O'Neill just gets that just a pinch wide, maybe missed it just a hair at the bottom of the swing, and fortunately only leaves the 2 8, did not leave the 10 pin with it. But with the spare here, he's going to trail by 14, with only two frames left for Bill O'Neill. Ow, look out. Oh, no, chops the front part of the double wood. Open frame, big trouble for O'Neill. And right as he let go of this, Bill O'Neill said, oh no. Watch that ball hook right by the eight pin. And up steps the Korean coup, looking for four in a row. I know now how to say a four bagger in Korean. How's that? I'll tell you in a second. Saban! Saban. They don't have the word ham bone in Korean, but they have the term four bagger. Saban. A big Saban for the South Korean right there as he puts a stranglehold on this match. Up 35 going into the foundation frame ninth. Say it with me Saban. Saban. You like it? I do. It's fun. It it's sounds catchy. like. Yeah. Take a look at the other finishers this week in the Scorpion. Boy, I think a lot of people may have underestimated Mr. Koo. I, I, you know what? I, frankly, I feel more comfortable calling him Dr. Koo. He's got more of a Dr. Koo type aura than a Mr. Koo, doesn't he? He's got that silent assassin yeah. look. And he is just putting it to Bill O'Neill right sure now. is. O'Neill, bottom of the ninth, gets them all to drop. Bill O'Neill's maxed out at 222. Young Jin Ku is already in the 240s. This match is over. So O'Neill, your three seed, D for Dunn. And Mr. Ku, I'm sorry. Dr. Ku moves on. Dr. Ku. Bill's wife, Christy. And there is the face of Dr. Koo. I just love this guy. I cannot get enough of him. 
I'm thoroughly enthralled. Those are some good-looking shades and a good-looking game to match. He's been very impressive this afternoon. And again, Ku, the lone lefty on today's telecast. Up next, two-handed sensation, Jason Belmonte, and then your number one seed, a power righty from South Korea in Jun Young Kim. Well, we're guaranteed one thing today, Rob. And that's an international player winning for the first time at the World Series of Bowling. So O'Neill in the clubhouse with a 208. Already seven strikes for Yong Jin Koo. Well, that puts him in the 250s. One more for 260. He shot 245 his first game, and apparently nobody told Dr. Koo he was supposed to be nervous for this telecast. Not even close. This guy has been steady, composed, and just lethal from the left side today. Dropped a 245 in match number one versus the Canadian Dan McLellan. Oh, oh so just going after the wrong lane. Well, something lost in translation there, perhaps. So Ku moves on. Randy, when we return, get ready to have your bowling passport stamped, all right? Kimberly takes us around the World Series of Bowling Globe when our coverage of the Scorpion Championship returns. Welcome back to Las Vegas, and we are getting set for match number three of the PBA Scorpion Championship. Young Jin Ku, your four seed, has moved on. Up next, the number two seed, Jason Belmonte and Kimberly, standing by with Jason. So, Jason, you've done your warm up. How are the lanes for you this morning? Uh, they're a little trickier than uh, what we've been playing on all week. So, I'm going to have to probably play a little straighter than I had in qualifying in the finals and uh, just throw the ball where my eyes are looking and, and hope the pins do the rest of the work for me. All right, well, good luck to you today. Appreciate it. Very interesting contrast. The lefty coup taking on the two handed thrower, Jason Belmonte. The number two player owns one PBA Tour title and is a PBA Rookie of the Year representing Australia. Belmo, Jason Belmonte. That one career title coming March 29th, 2009, at the Bowling Foundation Long Island Classic, where he beat his good buddy, Michael Fagan, or as Jason refers to him, Mick. Jason's got a bunch of nicknames for all his buddies, but nobody else uses them but Belmo. Every match today, we have seen whose competitors get off to slow starts. Well, all we've seen all day is right-hander struggle on this oil pattern. They had an opportunity to break the oil pattern down on the right side to their advantage, and that never happened. Now, I've only made this one time in my entire life, but Jason Belmonte can throw a backup ball into the 2-8. Watch this. There it is. <clears throat> We're so used to seeing those balls go right to left. It's interesting to watch it actually go left to right. And, and I got to tell you, I made that in a tournament back in 1980. That was my first tournament I ever competed in Syracuse, New York as an amateur, and I've never made it since. That's how tough the 2-8 is, or the 2-8-10 rather. Jason Belmonte with that backup ball actually has a legitimate chance to make that. If he would have gotten it a little bit farther to the left, he had a shot at making it. Belmo opens up with an open frame. Ku has started every match today with a strike. And the messenger kicks the seven and another opening strike for Dr. Ku. Well, this is a lot of pin action. It's good stuff. Now watch the head pin. It's going to come across and take the seven out. Right like that. 
That's just some good stuff there. Mr. Ku is unfazed by who he's going up against. It just doesn't matter. It's him, the lane, and the pins right now. Back to back, opening strikes for Ku. Had seven strikes in match one, eight strikes in his 256 208 victory over Bill O'Neill. Already has two here. And his competitor, Jason Belmonte, coming in off an open frame. Where have we seen this before? Oh, that's right, match one and two. All right. Jason's trying to do exactly what Bill O'Neill is trying to do in the last match, and that's to try to go straighter. These players are trying to go much straighter. And in order for Jason Belmonte to do that, he needs to use a very weak or non-aggressive bowling ball to keep the ball on line. Last chance, bowl. Not making a ball change yet, but he just called out his ball selection saying, you get a chance. Using a tropical heat, and you can see in terms of strength, it's at the bottom of the list, and that's to try to go as straight as possible. The hook is out for tropical heat. We'll see if it's utilized after this shot. Didn't like it. Body language, obvious. He's gonna make a ball change now, even, or on his next strike shot, even though he didn't throw that well. It's put him in a bad position because he knows he has to be too perfect. He's gonna go to something a little stronger. It's left of target the whole way and a nice break, only leaving the six pin. Lots of friends left. Now, it's not easy being a pro bowler. It's tougher when you have a wife and baby daughter. It's even more challenging when your home is in Australia. The travels and travails being Jason Belmonte when we return. Scorpion Championship from Vegas rolls on. Jason Belmonte in the fourth on the right lane. Didn't like that finish. I like his effort in the fifth a little bit more, Randy. A little late kick there on the 10 pin. That's his first strike of the match. Yeah, he kind of caved the big four in. But Q, third frame, right lane working on a double. But that pin action trips the six pin for a three bagger. Left lane, fourth frame. Another 10 in the pit. Now, right lane, looking for five in a row. Swish zone for Koo. Now looking to crack open a six-pack, Rob. Just a pinch high leaves the six-pin. Koo firmly in control of this one with a 53-pin advantage over the Australian Belmonte. And nobody outside of Koo has been able to figure out the lanes today and it's probably because Ku, the lefty, has been on the left side. Everybody else has been on the right side of the lanes and having issues. Well, all the power players on the right side did a very poor job of breaking down this oil pattern. And we're seeing it with each and every right-hander. Dan McClellan, Bill O'Neill, and now Jason Belmonte. Just the second strike of this match for Belmo. And it may be too little too late. He did go to a ball change and went to something stronger on that shot there. But young Jim Koo, excuse me, young Jim Koo jumps out to that quick five-bagger, and Belmo finds himself the 43-pin deficit. So Belmo has gone open frame, spare, 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 and then a pair of strikes. Here he is to start the seventh. Down 43. Chance. Oh, baby. Three in a row for Belmo. And he's starting to claw his way back into this. And being Jason Belmonte, not an easy thing. I've, I've been traveling the world bowling you know, since I was 16. And uh, it's always been difficult to leave home. But now it, it's, it's actually painful. With technology now, you know, I can get sent emails and videos and I can Skype with them, which obviously helps, but at the same time, it's also even more frustrating because you actually can see 
what you're missing out on. You know, Kimberly will send me like a, a, a picture message and, you know, it'll be Aria going out with the girls, you know, and it really hits hard because you're like, that's, that's what I'm supposed to be seeing. Um, and it, it definitely hurts even more when you don't bowl well. As hard and as, as upsetting as it can be, I kind of try and turn all that negative kind of, you know, force into some positive force and say, well, then do well and, and you know, prove to them that you're leaving not just for, for fun, but because you want to leave and you want to you beat these guys and you want to win titles and you want to make money and you're doing it for them as well. Belmo, a world traveling daddy, and Ku, a world traveling bowler, a native of South Korea. Up 33, here he is in the seventh. Strike number six. Ku bowls in the KPBA, the Korean Professional. Bowlers Association owns a total of seven perfect games and two 800 series. Thus, Ku. A 48 year old from South Korea. Uh, he's in great shape to move on to the finals. And it would be an all-Korean final. I just don't see how he can lose this tournament. Unless he finds the gutter. All right, Randy, we have a little break. Here is your more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of One Today. I'll give it to you. You can answer when Belmo's done. What was the best performance by a player that you have seen on TV? That's from Anthony on Staten Island. <laughs> Well, that's an easy question to answer. It was Erie, Pennsylvania, I believe, 1996. <sighs> Bob Learn Jr. averaged 280 for four games, including a 300 game. Best performance on television ever. <laughs> Dr. Koo's performance today, not too shabby either. Game effort from Belmo, no dice, and another open <clears throat> frame. Highest game by a right-hander thus far on today's telecast, 208 that's by not Bill O'Neill. That's not going to win many matches. Well, not when Young Jin Ku is averaging right at 250. Nice to have a 57 pin lead with two frames to go. Talk about a cushion. There he is with that unorthodox hold to go with the unorthodox wrist brace. That one sounded awfully soft. A little slow with the speed. Everything unorthodox. His grip, he uses four of his five fingers. The only finger that doesn't go into the bowling ball is his index finger. He wears the wrist brace a lot like Mike Scroggins. Doesn't um, use the wrist brace on spare shots. Takes it off so he can break his wrist back and throw a much straighter, flatter shot. Now that ball has about like four revolutions going down the lane. That's why he takes that wrist brace off. Randy, what hides behind those glasses? A very complex and deep. Man, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Young Jin Ku has just steamrolled the competition today. There's his first bad break of the day, really. But it's all over. Ku will advance. We thank Mike Moniak, the director of bowling operations here at South Point, a former pro. He and his crew have done a wonderful job here throughout the World Series of Bowling. So up next, uninterrupted coverage of our title match, Korean.
Jun Young Kim makes his American TV debut versus fellow South Korean Yong Jin Koo, the Scorpion Championship, when we return. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, welcoming you back to continuing coverage of the World Series of Bowling. We take a look at the updated step ladder here at the PBA Scorpion Championship. And Yong Jin Koo, the native of South Korea, a 41 pin win in match one, and then a 48 pin victory in match three, and then 25 better than Jason Belmonte sets up the all South Korean final. Time now for our Geico Championship recap. Rob, this Geico is all about the strike fest from Dr. Koo. Match number one, he takes on the rookie, Dan McClellan, and beats him 245 to 204 because all he did was throw a bunch of strikes. Kind of like the same thing that he did in match number two against Bill O'Neill. How about a six-bagger at O'Neill? He beats the hottest player on the planet, 256 to 208. Then in match number three, he takes on the two-handed phenom, Jason Belmonte, and guess what? Just strike after strike after strike. He beats Jason 233 to 208. So let's start our title match. Randy, shall we? Absolutely. Wonder what the Vegas odds were coming into today on an all Korean final? Uh, 40 to 1. 40 to 1. I and mean, we knew there would be at least one Korean in the final. Jun Young Kim, your number one seed. But here's the number four seed. Young Jin Koo has started every one of his matches with a strike today, has burst out of the gate every match. Way to jinx him, Rob. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Well, at least he hit the pocket and just let the flat seven, but yeah, he's been pretty much rock steady trying to climb all the way up the ladder and win for the very first time in the United States. So Ku takes care of the seven pin. Here's the introduction of your number one seed. The tournament leader made a run from 11th position during match play, representing Korea, Jun Young Kim. Kim, the fourth consecutive bowler in this five-event World Series of bowling to reach the finals as the number one seed for the first time ever. He is a righty. Righties have had all kinds of issues today. Those issues in the first frame would be none for Mr. Kim. Well, and this is the first right-hander we've seen that actually moved farther to the left or the middle part of the lane and actually tried to hook it for him. Another taboo. We saw Bill O'Neill use the taboo. We saw him win with the taboo. And he liked the taboo, Rob. Because we're in Vegas. That's right. Two in a row for your number one seed. And, and it's interesting because I spoke to Bill O'Neill during the break and he said the only chance a right hander would have to beat young Jin Koo is if he took a bowling ball, sanded it with about three, 360 grit sandpaper, and moved the first error on the right side. But that's not the case because Mr. Kim is actually playing way in. He started with a double. Let's see if it holds up. Serious? Seriously? Stone nine? Everything's been going his way the entire day. And he steps up and he goes solid nine on the right lane. Similar to what we saw last week. Sean Rash moving up the ladder. Everything going great for him until title match. Uh, he ran into a buzzsaw. I mean, Scott Norton started True. with a front eight. That, that's hard to beat no matter who you are or how well you're bowling. So Koo starts nine spare nine spare yeah seven pin stone nine to start i mean he's i think he's trailing for the first time all day
Sabu's first strike of the title match. Yeah, and the players get to choose their own music, right? And this guy chooses Cashmere from Zeppelin. Cashmere from Led Zeppelin. It's That's awesome. so cool. Awesome call by Dr. Koo. <laughs> oh, man. Jun Young Kim from Daeku, Korea. See, the first Korean bowler to qualify as tournament leader ever for a PBA event, and that includes the Japan Cup. What a quiet, smooth release as he goes three for three to open up. Yeah, quiet and smooth, but he really revs it up and really bangs on it at the bottom of the swing. Next week, it's the Shark Championship here in Vegas. History will be made in the, this event. And the NBA World Series of Bowling has a pair of two-handed bowlers appearing in the finals for the first time. Jason Belmonte and Vinny Zosu Palermo. See that one? One Eastern on ESPN. Kim looking for... A Saban! Saban! <laughs> right, so... Here's my question. What did Jun Young Kim know that the other three right-handers didn't? Great question. The answer is? Well, he played farther in. He moved in with the ball that hooks, while the other right-handers tried to play farther right and go straighter. And I think that was a nice blueprint print laid out for him because he knew the straighter was not going to be greater. His only other option was moving in and hooking in. And Koo gets his first double of the title match. Regardless, we will have the first Korean champion of a PBA event. The lead at 21 for your number one seed, Ju Young Kim, through four. <laughs> this is good. Good stuff, man. Jun Young Kim, your number one seat. Kimberly with more on the South Korean. Kimberly? Yeah, Rob, I spoke with Chun Bae, the interpreter for Jun Young Kim, and he told me that even though Kim is an amateur in Korea, he's been on many different TV shows. So he didn't think he was going to be nervous, but today Kim woke up and he said he was very nervous. So they walked around, they took in the surroundings to hopefully calm his nerves, and from the look of how he's bowling right now, it looks to be working. Yeah, I would say uh, whatever they did worked quite well, an opening five-bagger, Kimberly, for Kim. I also spoke with the interpreter. You know what he told me about uh, Jun Young Kim? I asked him about his style. I said, where did, this, where did he learn to hook it? You know, th did he get old tapes of uh, PBA bowlers? He says, no, you know, we, we bowl on a lot more oil in Korea than you do here in the States. And if you don't hook it like this, if you don't have the rev rate, you can't make the ball curve. Double wood in the sixth. This shot here looks like it hangs up on his hand. Watch this. He's going to loft this. We haven't seen him lofting any shots up until that one right there. It looked like it maybe hung up on his thumb. I don't, I'm not sure that was intentional. And you know what loft does, Rob? It, it delays hook, and that's why the ball went up light and left the 2-8. Perfect on multi-spin spares today, trying to take care of the 2-8. Squeeze the eight out of there. Head on over to PBA.com to download the hottest bowling game for your mobile device. It's PBA Bowling 2 from Concrete Software. The game allows you to bowl against many of your favorite PBA stars in multiple venues. Click on the PBA mobile game link at PBA.com to download today. Who would you want to bowl against on PBA Bowling 2? Bill O'Neill. I want, I, I want to bowl against Dr. Koo. Another strike for Young Jin Koo. And for Mr. Koo, a Saban four-bagger. 
and just answers the call. You know, he's trailing in the match. He knows that he's got to step up and perform if he wants to win this. Remember, he started with a seven pin, then he went solid nine, now a four bagger. One more strike here, he takes the lead by one. How about that? Never count out Dr. Koo. Never. After a slow start with a pair of opening spares, it's been four strikes in a row for Koo. Crafty Korean drops a nickel. The lead goes back to your four seed. So Ku with the lead of one pin watches his fellow countryman Kim. Ku mm. takes the lead. Kim looking to. Rebound after the 2-8, only to leave a solid 9-pin. He still has a possible 267 if he marks here. However, Ku can strike out and shoot 279. Kim has never experienced a professional event in Asia or the United States before because it would have jeopardized his amateur status. But the World Series of Bowling is open to international amateurs. Hence why Kim made the trip from Daegu, Korea. It's over here in Las Vegas. One of these men will become the first Korean to win a PBA title. Have you ever been to Korea? I have not. I, I have. To. Have you ever had kimchi? I've heard of it. These guys are right now about as hot as kimchi, just so you know. Is that like a buchalogi pepper or something? It's actually a very spicy cabbage. Huh. I mean, that ball hardly makes a sound. But remember the last time on the left lane where he left the 2-8, that loft? All right, so this time the ball's on the lane immediately. Like Rob said, you can't even hear the ball hit the lane. That's why the shot where he left the 2-8 previously on the left lane was an errant shot. Ku on top by two, bottom of the eight, looking for six strikes in a row. I don't know what he just said, but I like it. 48-year-old Young Jin Ku. Not so young, is he? Is just taking it to every player he's faced on today's telecast. Truly amazing performance. Nobody gave this guy a chance. They. I even heard some rumors from some other players throughout the league that this guy was a hack. He didn't deserve to be there, but guess what? He's thrown only one Brooklyn today. Everything else has been absolutely stellar. He's had the left side of the lane to himself, and he's taken full advantage. What a great shot that was. One flat seven in the first frame, Rob. A solid nine pin in the second, followed by a six-pack, only to leave a ringing seven right there in the ninth, and that ringing seven couldn't have happened at a worse time. Watch the four-pin go around the seven-pin. Man. Oh, and a huge miss. And that could just cost him this title. It's the first big mistake all day for Young Jin Ku. And it's the first single pin he has missed the entire event. And he knew it immediately. Now his max score, 246. Young Jun Young Kim can strike out and shoot 267. Working on a strike, he can take the lead right here. Look out. This one wide open. Tough, tough spare, 3 6 10. No gimme. Mr. Ku can barely stand to watch what his country mate is about to do. 
10 for 10 on multi-pin spares this week. That's real solid there, Rob. The towel comes off the noggin of coup. Readjust the specs. And we are in a one-pin game going into our final frame. Young, or Jun Young Kim, if he throws all three in the 10th frame, he will win and shut out Young Jin Koo. An audacious lead as Ku breathes a sigh of relief. What a break for him and a massive downer for Kim. Messenger just missing the front side of the 10 pin. That is open frame. Well, it's one of the worst breaks you'll ever see right there. The door is wide open now. Ku needs just nine pins and two balls to win. Remember, Ku with an open frame in his last frame. Left the seven on his first shot and then missed it. Needs nine for the title. And it's all yours. Yong Jin Ku takes the Scorpion Championship. What a performance throughout the afternoon by the 48-year-old from South Korea. And what a shot right there in the 10th frame when he needed it. Just a great performance all day. Jun Young Kim had the most success of any of the righties today. Looked like he had it figured out early on. Gave a brief opening to that man, Ku. <laughs> and a little more Led Zeppelin. That's right. Led Zeppelin, how appropriate. Let Kashmir play on. 236. 224. Ku with the title. That will clear customs no problem. Young Jin Ku with a 12-point victory in the title match of the PBA Scorpion Championship. And we'll be back to wrap it up from Vegas after this. Oh. <laughs> Young Jin Ku, 12-point victory in the title match. He's the first Korean ever to win on the PBA Tour, and he is standing by lane side with Kimberly. So today we made history here. Actually, Young Jin Ku made history here at the World Series of Bowling, made it an international fair. Chun Bei, you are here to be his translator. What is it like for him to make history? History, yeah. I did it. I always wanted to make it. How do you feel? Yeah. I was very happy. I was 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 happy. It allowed him to bowl better, and he liked to thank uh, the president of KPBA who actually supported him coming here. Chuka Hamida. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. And here's the, one of the many changing moments of this title match. Well, it was such a back and forth match, and just when it looked like Ku had this firmly in his grasp, he goes and whiffs the seven pin. So he gives the opening back to Kim. Kim can step up in the 10th frame, strike out, and win this. His first ball in the tenth is a pocket 7-10. The momentum goes back to Ku. Ku gets up. He needs nine pins and two balls, and that's the best nine pins I've ever seen. That's ten back. There are many things we'll remember about Young Jin. Ku, one of them are the glasses that I love. Now this is a legit close right here. What impressed you the most about Mr. Ku today? Other than the glasses? Mm -hmm. Well, nobody gave him a chance, and he climbed the ladder, beat every right-hander on the telecast. He broke the left side of the lane down perfectly. He had a game plan coming in. He executed.
and he wins the tournament. Four international competitors in today's event. It's the all South Korean final won by Mr. Koo. We take a look at our updated PBA World Championship standings. Again, the top eight players after 60 games of qualifying in the World Series of Bowling will qualify for the TV finals of the PBA World Championship held here in South Point in January. Bill O'Neill, who finished fourth today in first place as of now. Next week, we continue our stay here in Las Vegas with the Shark Championship coming your way here on ESPN. One Eastern next Sunday, the Geico Shark Championship. So, Yong Jin Koo, the 48 year old from South Korea, getting his first PBA tour title in dramatic fashion. Tough day for the American, Bill O'Neill. But the lone lefty, Mr. Koo, running rampant over the field today. For Kimberly Pressler, Randy Peterson, and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. So long from Vegas, where Mr. Koo. It's the first PBA win ever for a Korean.